In this video, I'm going to show you something you might have never thought possible. I'm going to show you new NES games that were released in 2023. Yes, you heard me right. New NES games. And these aren't just some cheap hacks, but actual homebrew games that you can play on your original NES or emulator or compatible console. These games are good. They rival some of the best games made for the NES. And they're all made by passionate developers who love the NES and want to keep it alive. So if you're a fan of the Nintendo Entertainment System, you don't want to miss this video. Let's go. Skate Cat by SJ Games is a game that combines two of the internet's favorite things, cats and skateboards. And if you think it's easy to ride a skateboard, try doing it with four paws instead of feet. Anyway, the concept here is simple. You play as a badass cat on a skateboard, trying to make your way through the city while avoiding poop and enemies. I mean, who hasn't been there, right? The gameplay is straightforward too. You just push right on the controller to go faster, left to slow down, you have a button to jump, and the other one does a sick trick. I don't know the name of the sick trick, but if you're like me and don't know your skateboard terms, you just mash the buttons and hope for the best, right? The graphics here are cute as a button and done in a childlike style, which makes sense considering the lead designer is still a very young person. But hey, more power to him for making NES games. The sound effects of Skate Cat are perfectly fine for a game of this type. And if you're looking for some catchy tunes to jam while skateboarding, well, these aren't bad. And hey, if you don't like them, you can turn down the sound and throw in some cat theme music like Cat Scratch Fever or What's New Pussycat. So is the game fun? Oh, you better believe it. Now, Skate Cat is more difficult than it looks, but it's not overly challenging. It's kind of the perfect balance of frustration and fun. And also speaking of fun, when you hit the pause button, you see the letters that spell out pause, P-A-W-S. And I mean, that had me grinning like the Cheshire cat. Anyway, SJ Games always comes up with interesting concepts and Skate Cat is no exception. It's a fun idea, skateboarding cat. It's like Tony Hawk meets Garfield. This end boss here throws turds at you. Now you might think that stinks, but I think it's pretty cool. So who is this game for? It's for people who enjoy endless runners or people who enjoy a challenge. And of course, cat lovers. And heck, if you're allergic to cats, you can still play this. Overall, Skate Cat's a solid entry on the NES. With multiple stages and a good balance of difficulty, it's definitely worth checking out. And let's be real, any game that has a boss that throws giant turds at you is worth the price of admission. So grab your board and get ready to shred some gnar, because this game is the cat's pajamas. All right, did you have enough cat puns yet? On to the next one. Imagine waking up in a dungeon, armed with nothing but your wits, a sword, and the ability to jump. Your mission? Find Sophie. You'll need to navigate through various levels, facing dangerous enemies, uncovering secrets, and gathering power-ups. Can you survive the post-apocalyptic world and save the day? So Ninja Dynamics is going to unleash their latest creation, Kingdom Crisis, onto the NES. Now at first glance, the graphics here may seem small and underwhelming. The sprites are really tiny, and when played on a handheld device, well, get ready for some eye strain. But don't let that fool you. The small graphics give you a better view of the game's world. It allows you to see the larger picture. But as you progress through the game, the combat feels really natural, and the small sprites don't hinder your experience at all. Not to mention, the intro, cutscenes, and NPCs give the game a very cinematic feel. The sound in Kingdom Crisis is spot on. The music is always catchy and engaging, and it doesn't seem to get old. I've put about an hour into this demo so far, and I still find the music dynamic and catchy. And that might be because each area has its own unique theme. And I'll admit this game is addictive. However, there's still an air of mystery surrounding this game. There's plenty of potential items and spells available at the shop, but it's not clear what they actually do. Every time I boot up the game, I'll try buying a different item, and I have not figured out how to use that item at all yet. So anyway, as you explore, you may find hidden areas, such as this fun Easter egg, a secret spot where you get to meet the developer. But be warned, there are parts where you will die over and over and over again. So save often, so you can get past these challenges. With all that said, Kingdom Crisis has undeniable potential as a standout NES game. The game's unique features make it a must play for fans of the genre. Download the demo and experience the adventure for yourself. Within 20 minutes, you'll know if Kingdom Crisis is a game for you or not. But with its unique graphics, addictive gameplay, and engaging sounds, you owe it to yourself to at least join the adventure and try to save the world in Kingdom Crisis.
All right, let's talk about Nosy Joe, the power mystery. You play as the titular character, a nosy guy, who's been summoned by the mayor to investigate a citywide blackout. Sounds fun, right? Well, it is. You'll be doing a lot of platforming, shooting down enemies, and solving puzzles by finding switches and power-ups. There's even some epic boss fights to get your blood pumping. Visually, the game has a cool retro vibe, reminiscent of Raid 2020. But don't worry, it's better than that train wreck. The music's also worth mentioning. It's catchy and well done. And I think it fits the detective theme of the game perfectly. Is Nosy Joe the power mystery a fun game? Well, yeah. It's actually way more enjoyable than it looks at first glance. However, there is a bit of jank to the game, if you know what I mean. It's hard to describe, but something feels slightly off. Nevertheless, I think it's still worth playing. Who's this game for? Well, if you're a fan of action platformers, you'll get a kick out of this one. And if you enjoy games with cutscenes and a fun story, you'll probably like that too. Overall, I think Nosy Joe The Power Mystery is a solid game, albeit slightly flawed. If the controls were a bit tighter or a few more tweaks were made, it could be even better. But regardless, it's definitely worth checking out. Big thanks to Board B for creating a fun game and reaching out for me to review it. This one's called House in the Cemetery. The concept behind this is your uncle has purchased a remote mansion to conduct his experiments, and there's a lot more going on in his new home than he planned for. So you explore the mansion and solve puzzles to help your uncle with his new property and deal with unwanted guests. So essentially, this is a point and click adventure game, only instead of pointing and clicking, you walk up to the objects that you want to interact with. Then you hit the A button and kabling, you interact with that object. A lot of this game is either puzzle solving, finding an object, or doing a particular task in order to advance to the next area. There are some RPG elements to it that kind of remind me of Maniac Mansion meets Earthbound. However, it's not really either of those games. It's really got its own thing going for it. But if you enjoy the humor of those previously mentioned games, you'll probably enjoy this one as well. The graphics here are competent. It kind of reminds me of Earthbound. And this style of graphics, while not stunning, adds to the feel of the game. It really creates this atmosphere of fun. Like you can tell what everything is supposed to be, which is important in a game like this where you're looking for objects based on the graphical cues. The sound here is both good and bad. It's good in the way that there's nothing about it that's annoying within the music or the sound effects, but there's nothing that really stands out about them either. I suppose you could say when you don't notice the sounds, you're probably way more immersed into the game as a whole. As far as fun goes, I would say this game is pretty fun. I found myself exploring all the areas I could, clicking on everything I could, and laughing at a lot of the dialogue. For this kind of game, I consider that a win. Perhaps some of the tasks can be a little tedious or even cryptic at times. For example, there's a puzzle you have to solve by stepping on the right tiles in the correct order, or else you perish. However, it's not that bad because you come back to life immediately in the next room and get to try again but there's really no clues on how to do it. It's just trial and error over and over again. But really, this is just a small nitpick. Overall, the game is really fun. So I played through this demo twice now, and I found new things on my second playthrough, where I had already thought I explored every area. So this leads me to think there are probably many secrets and Easter eggs buried in this game beyond the demo. So if you're into exploring, this kind of thing will keep any explorer occupied for a long time. So who is this for? I think it's for people who enjoy the point-and-click adventure with a fun story and wacky characters. Will it please Earthbound fans? Not necessarily. Is it going to please Maniac Mansion fans? Not necessarily. However, if you're a fan of old-school point-and-click games with RPG elements, I think you'll find this one fun. Overall, I think The House in the Cemetery is a good game to watch out for. I know the developer has been working on this for a while now, and they're preparing a Kickstarter so they can throw this game on a cartridge. The demo here is just a test, and one that you can play for yourself if you check the link in the description below. Hopefully the full game matches the potential shown in this demo, but I believe the demo is worth your time to check out if this looks enjoyable to you. Okay, so have you heard about Save the Queen? It's an upcoming NES game that's currently on Kickstarter. And I gotta tell you, it's looking pretty sweet. The game's concept is a blend of RPGs like Final Fantasy and action-adventure games like Legend of Zelda. You'll be interacting with NPCs like in Final Fantasy, but wielding a sword and exploring dungeons like in Zelda. Plus, you have a companion fighting alongside you in real time, which adds a new level of strategy to the mix. 
The graphics have a Dragon Warrior vibe to them, which is a nice change of pace from the typical Zelda-inspired pixel art. The gameplay here feels like a classic RPG, but with an action twist, and it's really cool to see this style of gameplay put into a more traditional look of an old-school RPG. As for the sound, it takes some inspiration from Zelda, especially in the sound effects department. And while the music isn't mind-blowing, it serves its purpose and fits the game well. Now let's get to the good stuff. Is it fun? Heck yeah! I had a blast playing this demo, and I could definitely see the potential for a great old-school NES story here. The enemies can be challenging but fun to battle, and the layout is well designed. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised by Save the Queen. I stumbled upon it on YouTube and was immediately intrigued. And really, I think this game has a lot of potential. I'm excited to see it fully realized. So if this sounds good to you, it's definitely one worth checking out. Up last, but definitely not least, we're talking about Krabby Attack. This is the latest release from Turtle Time Media. The premise of Krabby Attack is a bit silly, but that just adds to the charm of the game. Apparently it's two turtles, Toby and Walton, and they had a nightmare about a crab invasion after eating too much pizza. And that's where this game begins. It's a simple lighthearted story that sets the stage for some crab shooting fun. So right off the bat, we're gonna talk about the graphics. Krabby Attack has a cute and colorful aesthetic that fits perfectly with the turtle and crab themes. The animations are smooth and the overall presentation feels right. As far as the gameplay goes, you're a turtle, you're shooting crabs with seashells, and those crabs keep coming back to life. Your job is to clear the screen of crabs before the time runs out. There's also power-ups in this game, and to get the power-ups, you have to shoot the right color of crab to unlock them. It's a fun and challenging mechanic that keeps things interesting. The two-player mode, that's the shining star here. It allows you to work together to beat the levels, but at the same time, you're competing against each other for a high score. This alone adds a layer of replayability that keeps the game fresh. While the sound is nothing to write home about, it really does the job of not being too distracting while you're busy shooting crabs. And speaking of shooting those crabs, the controls are responsive and intuitive. It makes it really easy just to jump right in and start playing. Overall, I'm impressed with Krabby Attack. It's a well-designed game that is both fun and challenging. This is basically like an arcade shooter like Galaga or Space Invaders, combined with the puzzle elements of a game like Dr. Mario. So if you're a fan of turtles, crabs, pizza-induced nightmares, or arcade fun, check out Krabby Attack from Turtle Time Media. Well, that wraps up this episode of Modern Homebrew NES Games. I hope you enjoyed this look at some new NES games that were released in 2023. I think it's amazing that people are still making games for this old console. And some of these are really impressive. If you want to play any of these games, you can find links in the description below. And if you know of any new NES games that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments. I always appreciate your feedback and suggestions. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.